Hello everyone, this is Levi Sheridan. Today I am making a video about this wheel that I designed and manufactured for a mechatronics class that I'm currently enrolled in at school. This wheel will eventually be used in a sumo robot that will compete in a sumo robot competition. The competition consists of a three by three foot neoprene mat arena into which two autonomous sumo robots will be placed and during a one minute match, each robot will try to push the other out of the arena. My team took the strategy of trying to maximize traction and grip, which is why we decided to design and manufacture our own wheels. We are constrained by cost, so we thought that we could produce better quality wheels that would cost less than the alternative of buying something off of the shelf. In this video, I will talk about the design of the wheels and then also show you how me and my team went about manufacturing them. Uh, the wheel consists of a hard 3D printed plastic inner core in a cast outer silicone section. The challenge with working with silicone is that it does not stick to anything besides itself, so we had to come up with a creative solution in order to get this outer silicone structure to adhere or stick to this inner core. The solution we came up with was to incorporate these little anchor points here. So this wheel was cast inside of a mold I unfortunately don't have right now, but I'll put a photo of it up on the screen and you'll also see it later in the video when I show you all how we made the wheel. But essentially, the silicone is poured into this mold around this core. The silicone then flows into these cavities here. Uh, I'll put a image of what they look like internally on the screen. Uh, but essentially, when the silicone cures, they act as anchors that hold the silicone onto this inner structure. Additionally, we incorporated this rough texturing to increase surface area and try to help uh, the silicone grip onto the hard plastic core. We also had to incorporate this uh, metal coupler uh, to connect the motor to the, the wheel. Uh, here's a little test that we currently have of our structure for the robot. So you can see there are the, the hubs, or rather the, the shaft of the motor and the, the hubs then slide on there. Uh, there are two set screws, uh, and it may seem like there's no way to tighten them, but we've incorporated these holes here that go through and align with the, with the set screws on there. And then we used a very sharp needle to poke through uh, the silicone. You can kind of see the little cavity there. So we're able to tighten this onto the motor without having to have the coupler uh, external from the inside of the wheel, which is really cool. Um, but the methods that we used, this anchor and then the texturing seemed to work really well. There was good adherence between them. Uh, it sticks very well and we haven't had any separation problems. We also decided to cast over this surface here, which helps. Uh, and we incorporated these bevels here to help the silicone kind of curve over the top surface and add a little bit more adherence capabilities. Um, so that's kind of the general design of the wheel. It's quite simple. Uh, the biggest challenges were getting the silicone to stick, but it worked the first time. Uh, so now I'm going to show you all how we manufactured this. First, we secured the wheel hub to the mold using a screw through the bottom, which was already done. We then used clamps and electrical tape to secure and seal both halves of the mold together to ensure that the silicone would not leak through the seams. Uh, we were concerned, so we took these precautions and it did work well. We're using Dragon Skin 20 by Smoothon. It is a one-to-one -one part A and B silicone, so we mixed both part A and B individually just to ensure that they had good consistencies. After that, we used a common kitchen scale and a clean cup to measure out the desired amount of part A. We had to do multiple batches of silicone and multiple pours because the cup was not big enough, as you'll see in a little bit, uh, but I'm just taking my time to make sure we achieved the correct weight. After that, I swap my gloves and use a clean tool to then pour in an equivalent amount of part B into the same cup. I'm just taking my time here because I don't want to overshoot the weight and then have to add more part A as I would have to clean a whole new set of tools and swap gloves. After that, we thoroughly mixed part A and B. Uh, this is very important to make sure that you get into the corners of the cup and that all of the part A and B are mixed very thoroughly, otherwise you may not get uh, good curing capabilities or properties from the silicone. After that, we put the silicone into a vacuum chamber to suck out all of the air that we introduced. And as you can see, it had almost overflowed, which is why we had to do multiple batches. The cup was not big enough. We then left the silicone inside of the vacuum chamber just for a couple more minutes 
to let the air evacuate. Uh, we want to have as little air in the silicone as possible. We then turn off the vacuum and reintroduce air into the chamber, and then we pour the silicone into the mold. I'm going to first pour in just a little bit uh, into the bottom of the mold, and then I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna bang the mold on the table just to help even out the silicone and also release any air that was trapped in while it was pouring. As you can see, the silicone kind of forms these little bands or ribbons that then fold in over each other, which introduces air, which is obviously not ideal. And now I'm just scraping out the rest of the silicone and, and banging the mold on the table a little bit more, which works really well uh, to excite the bubbles and get them to rise to the top of the surface and, and to leave the silicone. We, we didn't have any problems with bubbles being introduced in the final cast. After that, we mixed another batch in the same manner and poured it in. And this time I'm trying to be a little bit more aggressive so that the silicone doesn't ribbon and introduce air. And I think I did a little bit of a better job here. This was our second batch. And again, I very aggressively bang the mold on the table and uh, take my time to do that just because I don't want to have any air. I'm banging on the edges so the silicone can flow into the anchor cavities as well. We then do a very small third batch just to ensure that we reach the level that we wanted. And after that, uh, I secure a clamp because it fell off and then do a lot more binging and I poke a couple bubbles with a toothpick there. Uh, and I'm just kind of checking to make sure that there are no big bubbles. And if there are, I'm popping them with the toothpick, which worked really well. And just very aggressively binging, uh, doing everything I can to get all of the bubbles out. And that's pretty much it. We just let the silicone cure. And uh, after about four hours, I came back and this is what it looked like. And basically the mold uh, worked really well. And we ended up with the product that you saw at the beginning of the video. So that's my Sumo Robot wheel. There will be more videos in this series as I progress through the project and the course. Uh, but I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video and I hope you have a great day.